okay hello students here i would like to continue with the lesson uh, practice problem for lesson 4.3 and 4.4 so this is last time i did 1 till 10 and this is 11 and it says students in a mathematics class took an exam and took a three test monthly with an equivalent exam the average scores for the class are given by the human memory model so you see so the equation is given showing what is the average scores ft and this is done for 10 months here see in the beginning and then what was the average uh, scores for the class and then one month two month three month until so the domain is all the months 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8, 12 and the function is already modeled to you now what the question is you are you're supposed to use the graphing utility but uh but the but the graphs are already given a b c d look at those two graphs seems to be everyone starts with 80 so the 80 and little above and then this one goes down decreasing this one goes little slowly increasing and then steady this is little going down and then steady and then this is dropping very fast then the first one so we need to know which is the right one they also give you what was the average score in the beginning that is t equals zero what is the average score when it is four months and you, and you need to round it to one place decimal and what was the average score after eight months so all you do is in the equation you're going to put zero and then we can plug in four and the reason to plug in you will say when it is four is it going above this if it is four what so we'll try to figure out with this four and also for eight months how the trend is. and the last yeah those are the questions so let me take directly the this equation so i try to just want to sketch and can we become a human calculator to see at least how the sketch would look like now if you see the problem there's a log of t plus one now so when you look at this t plus one you can see what is the vertical asymptote how do we figure out the vertical asymptote so vertical asymptote is you put the parenthesis equal to zero you can see t plus one is zero and that is t equals minus one so this is t stands for number of months right so that means at this one let's say this is one month and i can draw a vertical asymptote so this will be the vertical asymptote right and that means and also this inside the parenthesis also should be greater than zero that means it so t has to be greater than zero that means everything so the domain is you can't have minus one but everything to the right side so the domain is for this is 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 uh, of course i made t greater than equal to minus one so it has to be greater than minus one minus one cannot be taken but it could be it could be zero it could be one two and until 20 all the whole numbers until 12 so that's the domain now the range part let's see what is the range range for log is always from negative infinity till plus infinity but let's see what is this graph will look like now we want to know when is this what is the x interest we want to know when is t plus one is one why because logarithm of one is zero no matter what the base is because how many times do i multiply so when you, uh, how many times should I multiply b to get one? And you know that if the b raised to zero only is one, and that's why we say we want to know when this is going to be x-intercept. So t plus one, when you put, you get subtract minus one, and you get t equals zero. That means the graph goes through the point here. So that means t plus one, this t plus one will be will be something like this. It will be something like this. But because there's a minus, there's a 17 there, so it maybe stretches by by this one will remain here. This will be zero, but maybe this is one that will get stretched. So I'm not exactly sure. uh, we're taking all. It may be stretching like this, and then there is a minus. It reflects over the it reflects over the x-axis because of the because of this minus sign so that means this graph will go reflect this way and then it adds plus one so there is a the, the graph shifts 81 units to the right so if this is a 181 will be maybe here 
That means the whole thing goes, oh God, I don't have enough room. So that means the whole thing goes like this. See? So something like this. The whole graph goes, shifts up. So I'll take this off. This is gone, goes up. So that is gone. Okay. Uh, I hope I'm making sense here. Just to understand the. So this graph, this one is shifts up. Very good. So this. Uh, So this is the graph. But then there are two graphs. If you see one graph is something like this, and there's another graph which looks like uh, if you see in that B or C one of the it is it is going through 81. Maybe this is 81. Uh, and the reason how do we know it's going to 81 is because if you see uh, look at this equation, if we put t equals zero, the we want to know the y intercept there. So the y-intercept here is uh, put t equals 0, and you see this becomes 1. Log of 1 is 0. So we get 81 minus 17. So you're going to get a multiply by 0, and you get, sorry, 81. So the, so the y-intercept is 81. So that's the point, right? Now the question is, what is? Now you need to use the calculator for this to figure out what is zero they want to know at maybe what about zero what is f of zero what is f of in the beginning what was the average score then what, what is f of four and then what is f of six maybe and so all you do is using the graphing calculator let me get the graphing calculator and 81 minus 70 log t plus one so let's see here i'm gonna I'm going to use directly a new. The new is always better. And then you say calculator and put ft parenthesis t. Put the colon here, uh, control and this so that you get that. And you want to save that, right? You got 81. I think it is minus 17. And just a log because log the base 10 looks like. And parenthesis it is t plus 1. T plus one and you're done and enter. So now all you do is you put what is f of zero. So you just put f of zero and you get the answer. Uh, because the mistake I did is you go back and then enter. That's not a zero, right? It is the f of zero and then control enter. So there you get a point. So that's the 81 which is in the beginning, right? Then you put f of four and you put control this one you get. 69, that's almost like 70, right? And if you put f for 4, 8, sorry, let's go back and enter and then control enter that way 64. So from, so it goes until 8, it goes to 64. Now if you look at the graph here, let's go back to the graph, whatever that is. Okay, you can graph this also and we can check. But here, if you see, we, we want to know when it was 8, it was 64. So it now here, if it is 8, let me let me see. These are the only two things I can think of, right? So look at this. So remember when we try to work it up for, I think it was four or 70 and four here is, we go here all the way, this is like almost this is 70. So this is, and I remember this was 64. This is at eight. This is almost the same thing almost. But if you see this is gives like 70, there it was almost 70. And at eight, it was 64. So yeah, that's 64, this is, 70 and 64 maybe like this and you get the answer so this is the correct answer now my question is you can also graph but my point is without graphing how do we do this so you could also use 
this and say okay let's put graph here and you can just put here one plus and then i put control this and then that's the 10 and then this is i think i forgot to put minus 17 and then here it is uh x plus one because i don't i can't use t and enter and it looks like we can't see the graph remember this has to be more than 80 i'll put 100 there see how the graph there it is or i can just you know press one of them and you can bring it like this this is how it is you can do like this also and that's how the graph is and if you want to know also from here you can click on the trace here and then graph trace and whichever the point you wanted you can put a zero and you enter you get the answer that one you put four and enter you get the second one you put uh, eight and enter you can even see what's happening and that's how you can decide and i hope i'm making sense to you so let's move to the question number oh it took me 11 minutes for this one dang question okay question number 12 says use the laws of the logarithm to expand the expression remember the laws of the logarithms are first of all we know log of one to the base b is always zero and if it is the b to the base it is one these are the main thing we need to know and logarithm of m to the base b plus logarithm of n to the base b you just have to multiply the two so you can combine and if it is subtraction log m minus logarithm n and that is log quotient and also if you have power, logarithm power laws of logarithm for the power it is if it is m raised to n to the base b this is n times log of m to the base b and that's how important and also there's another one which is not needed here in this case the question is expand now what is expand when this is logarithm of three and there are two parts there six times x all you do is expand expand means you need to have two logs so, so this is like m and n so if you see this is this is m and this is n so you just have to separate it because the product look at this you're going backward this is when you go this way that's expand so it means you want to have two logs and when you go this way then you write uh, combine or you know you don't say in in in, uh, in the uh, polynomial remember when you say this is called expand means you, you just write like this is called expansion right and you go back backward that's called factorization so i hope that clarifies so this can be written as two parts one is so one is logarithm of plus log so you have to have two logs with the, with the base three and then the first one is six that six so that becomes six here and the other one is the black one which is n and you're done so that's all you're supposed to do not difficult they may ask you another part with the my with the quotient so depending on the situation i'll walk through but remember these are the important formulas that you've been knowing from algebra 2 and we are just using this applying right now Okay, secondly, here use the logarithmic of this and expand the same thing. Now, there's a square root. The first thing is, how do I write square root as we can write 3 raised to is 7 over 2? This is, this is 7 over 2 because there's m. If you have m raised to b raised to n, suppose this is n and n, this is b raised to n. So then this is, uh, we don't, the base is the b. So this is of the form logarithm of m raised to n to the base b is n times logarithm of m to the base b. So this 7, uh, this 7 by 2 the power can be multiplied here, 7 over 2 and times, times log of t and you are done. That's all you're supposed to write. Practice problem number seven, similarly, how do we do this one? First of all, there's a square. One thing is, 
uh, there is a y. So there is a quotient. So, so we'll use the quotient formula log of m divided by n is logarithm of m minus logarithm of. So that's the first thing we can do. So this is the m, and the bottom is the n. So we can write logarithm to the base 7. So there are two parts here, log and the m. You can think the numerator here is. So the numerator is is this part square root of square root of 7 and x raised to 9. So that's the and the down is the y. So that will go y. So this is done. You can't do nothing here. This is done. We can still expand this and how there's a square root, right? Uh, so there's a square root. So this square root we can write as, so this will be logarithm of, uh, did I miss, out? oh, this is x, right? So this is seven times x, not x, it is, it is x seven raised to one half, okay? So I'm gonna keep this my this this stay. So I'm gonna work out only the this left part. So this will be again written as uh, this power of uh, logarithm of power laws of logarithm that is m raised to n. This is like n that will be multiplied outside. So it become half logarithm of seven of x to the base seven. And then this thing again. Remember, there's a multiplication. So this will be one half outside. And the inside you have two log. One is log of seven plus log of x. Let me write this back again here, which is log of y to the seven. And finally, uh, you have to distribute this. So that becomes half log of first one to the base seven. And plus, of course, log of this part, the, 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 the base is the same as the input. So that becomes straight away one, so you don't even, have, so when you write, so this whole thing becomes just a half and the other half gets multiplied to half of x, sorry, log of x, log of x, and log of y to the base seven, you are done. So that's, that's all it is. So basically your final answer is, it is half plus half logarithm of x seven, sorry, x to the base seven and minus log of y to the base seven and you're done. So this is the last answer. And question number 15 now. Okay, use the logarithm to combine. A combine means if you have log of m plus n like this. So if, you, if there are two logs, you try to write a single m, m times n. That's it. Now here, uh, can we combine in this case? If you see that you, before you combine, there has to be one time, right? It has to be one time. But you see there's a half. So we, can we write this log of m to the base? This is m, log logarithm of m and this goes as an exponent to m so this becomes m n base so this part will be logarithm of 5 to the 5 raised to half see and then 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 this is the base and this two and is taken to the as the exponent to the second log which is 5 raised to 2 and not not over uh, once you've done, you can't have a half this. So this you can write as logarithm of square root of five to the base two minus logarithm of five times five is 25 to the base two. And you're done, that's all it is. I hope made sense. Let's go to the, almost we are ending. Use the laws of logarithm to combine the expression now here. There is a one here, so we are fine with that. That is a log of m, but then plus we need to have another log. There's a two there. You cannot have a two. So how do I get away with that two? So if we have something like this, that becomes logarithm m raised to n. Like this, see. So we need to multiply. Uh, take this as the exponent to seven. So this becomes log four six first plus logarithm of seven square. See. So this is the input here and the base four. 
the left stays the same but the, the second one this will be 49 and you're dying so th these questions are really really easy okay <clears throat> this one uh, look at this question so we, there is a one here there's a one here so we can easily use a log of m log of n to the base b is same as log of m divided by m see? it means we can write down logarithm of this is the m and so that x squared minus 36 and the second part is the this is the x minus 6 but we can st still simplify this because this 6 i forgot that 6 so the logarithm of 6 and the top part we can easily factorize as say, the x minus there is x minus by just looking at this x minus 6 and also this 36 you know it is x square is same as uh, we can write this as the uh, 6 square and you can use the difference of square formula and write a plus b and a minus b i mean so that we see the x plus 6 and x minus 6 so we plug this in right here and write x plus 6 and x minus 6. now we can easily cross out x minus because you remember when you talk about logarithm x minus 6, the x minus 6 has to be greater than 0. So if you add 6, x has to be greater than 6. And then naturally you can just uh, see that x has to be greater than the domain has to be greater than 6. So, but the main thing is x is not 6. So that's why we can cross this out. So this becomes logarithm of x, x plus 6, and you are done. So question number 18 practice problem is use the change of base formula. What's the uh, change of base formula is if you have log a to the base b, we can always use as a quotient of logarithm. That means this input you write here and, and write different base as c, logarithm of b and c could be. Now remember the base is always has to be zero and c should not be uh, one. So we can easily write any C number other than greater. Of course, it cannot be negative. It has to be greater than zero and, and one. So an example is, let's see if they give you like this. You can, you can write this as two logs, okay? Or remember, I'm writing two logs, quotient of two logs, always remember. And of course, we have to, we can prove this. And for this, I'll make separate video as why is this, why is this? So right now, I'm just applying this. Okay, we, we did this in, remember again I said, you, we did this in Algebra 2. Then you did it in pre-calculus. And then here we are now still working on those. So we can write this as log of 7. And this 4, which is the base, that becomes also the input. But we can change it to some other base. So I'm, what, what I mean is, I can write 7 here, 4 here, 7 here, 4 here, and change the base to some other number maybe i can put five see that also correct maybe i want to put 10 that also correct maybe i want to put e so remember when you put e it is ln of seven natural logarithm or the base is e is a natural logarithm and ln of four and then you can use any of this in the calculator and figure out so let's say i'm gonna do this seven and four be five go to the calculator take a new one and go directly to the calculator and use hello so i would click on this one and divide because you want to have log two log the top one we put log and remember it was it was five i changed to and log of seven i think i forgot what was it okay seven and four what is that? So I'll put seven there. And again, you need to put the second one also logarithm. So put for five and here seven, four. And then you don't enter, but click on control and uh, there you go, you got the answer. So that's all you're supposed to do and you're done. Whatever the question they ask me, ask you two place decimal, one place decimal that you can finish. Thank you.
question number 99. This is the last practice problem we will do. So if you see this again, the same story, if you, you have to use log m, uh, log combining two logs into one, so then you have to multiply the two, two inputs and then become the, so this become, now you, you, there's a four there, you can't have a four and eight. So I'll have to use another formula, logarithm of m, and this becomes log of m raised to n. So this becomes n and this is b. So this 4 gets multiplied up. So this becomes logarithm of x raised to 4 to the base 4. This 8 will go as exponent to, to y, y raised to 4. See? Now there's a plus sign. So we can easily combine. Now how we can easily combine? Because they also have the same base. If they are different, you can't do. So we write a single log and then multiply the 2. So this x raised to 4 gets multiplied this to y raised to 4. And you're done. So this ends uh, practice problem 4.3 and 4.4. And I hope you finish your, your homework separate. And the next video I'm doing to, is going to do now very soon is lesson number uh, 4.5 how logs are used in real life situation we'll, we'll see those kind of problems